In this video, we're going to derive the GLS estimator and we're going to allow there to be both autocorrelation and heteroscedasticity because up until now, we've only considered the case where there was heteroscedasticity and no autocorrelation. So the idea here is that we have some sort of linear model, y is equal to x times our vector of our parameters beta plus our vector of our errors u. And now what we're going to assume is that there is some sort of variance structure. So the variance of u given x is equal to sigma squared times some matrix omega. And unlike before, we're going to not necessarily assume that omega is a diagonal matrix. So we're going to assume that omega has the following sort of structure. So it has omega 1, 1 as its first component, omega 2, 2 as its second diagonal component through to omega n n as the last diagonal component. But unlike before, we're going to assume that this matrix also has off diagonal components. So the second component would be omega 1, 2. And then if we continue all the way over to the right hand side, we would then have omega 1, n. And if we go all the way down to the bottom, we will also have omega n, 1. And we could fill in all the various components in between. But the main sort of message here is that omega isn't a diagonal matrix. So that means that we both have heteroscedasticity because I haven't necessarily assumed that the diagonal components are actually the same as one another. In other words, I've got omega 1, 1, omega 2, 2. And I haven't assumed that omega 1, 1 is equal to omega 2, 2 is equal to omega n, n. And also here we have autocorrelation amongst errors because we have got off diagonal components and for example this first off diagonal component omega 1 2 represents the covariance between u1 and u2 but we're going to proceed exactly as we did before we're going to assume that there is some sort of transformation p which we can apply to both sides of our original equation so that's py is equal to px times beta plus pu and what we're going to assume is that the variance of our transformed error, so the variance of PU given X, is going to be equal to sigma squared times the identity matrix. So in other words, on our transform system, we're going to assume that we both have homoscedastic errors and that there is no autocorrelation in the errors. So how can we do this? Well, we've already kind of done this, right? We've already evaluated the variance of P u given x, we know that it's equal to p times the expectation of u times u prime given x times p primed, where p prime represents the transpose of p. And we know already what this expectation of u u primed is, it's just sigma squared times omega. So we can rewrite this as sigma squared times p times omega, where omega isn't necessarily diagonal, times p prime. And what we want is we want this to be equal to sigma squared times i. So we want to choose our transformation matrices p such that this is the case. But we've already solved this, right? We've already found that p in this circumstance has to be equal to, or can be equal to rather, minus or omega to the power minus a half. So actually, we can apply exactly the same transformation as we used before in the presence of autocorrelation. It's just that this transformation isn't quite going to be as neat as it was before because omega to the power minus a half is going to be a matrix which has both diagonal and off-diagonal components opposed to what it was before when we just had diagonal components. But the message, or the important message to take away from here is that GLS in the presence of autocorrelation and heteroscedasticity uses the same form as that which we found in solely the presence of heteroscedasticity. So there's no extra sort of learning required here. We can use exactly the same sort of transformation as we used before. 